struggle to find our keys or remember where we parked our car, but not our next guest. In 1997, Dave Farrow entered the Guinness Book of World Records after memorizing and recalling the exact order of 59 decks of cards randomly shuffled together. Since then, he's been known as the man with the world's greatest memory. And I got this book right here to prove it. It's the Guinness <laughs> World Record book, and you're in it. Dave Farrow, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. So when you discover this, how old were you? <laughs> well, actually, th this is really the, the most important part of the story, that uh, people think that this is some gift you're born with. Uh, but I was actually diagnosed with ADHD, as you know, and, yep. and dyslexia when I was a kid. I actually had a very poor natural memory. So what I use is a series of techniques. Uh, we, we call it having a trained memory. And it's a system that uh, can be developed. And the great thing about it is anybody can learn it. You've got to practice a lot to get to my level. But we recently did a double blind neuroscience study over at McGill University to prove that we can do this in the lab and within 20 minutes we actually were able to triple everyone's memory on basic memory tests. This is going to be great for aging, dealing with aging. Absolutely, it? yeah, that, that's one of the, the most exciting parts of the research is that we know that stimulating the brain helps memory but the big problem is how do you stimulate it? A lot of people do a lot of games, there's kind of a joke among, amongst neuroscientists that, that um, you know, Sudoku and crosswords yeah. will make you better at Sudoku and crosswords and not much else. And it tells you the sense of humor of neuroscientists that that's a joke. But so what do you need to do then? <laughs> well, you, if you want to actually exercise the brain, you need to do the activity that you want to get better at. It's pretty simple. If you want to be a better musician, you've got to actually play a musical instrument. So if you want to have a better memory, you've got to memorize stuff. So uh, what, I, what we did actually is developed a, a little a tournament league. Uh, it starts off at the high school level, but we actually, more to your point, we actually have seniors involved as well. Uh, and it turns some of these memory tricks into to a game that people can play and it's really taken off. Does it work for the average thing? I mean, it's great if you're memorizing decks of cards, but for example, yeah. I have to put things in specific pockets yeah, yeah, because yeah. I will forget <laughs> where they are. I have trails of things because I'll forget. However, when it comes to other things like trivia or whatever, yeah. it'll be like that. Most people's memories are one-sided like that. It's actually, it's actually a, a, a term of being one-sided in, 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 the, in the science and the art. Um, what I have to say is I, I have a trick actually for that if you're interested. I feel like I have an app for that. But, um, <laughs> so, so next time you forget where you put something, this has, this has to do with a, an attentiveness exercise. Mm -hmm. So you do this on a regular basis, you do this every day for a week or two, and pretty soon you'll be doing it automatically, subconsciously, you won't even realize you're doing it. And frustrate it, everybody in the so room. It's so simple. It takes two seconds, you'll never forget where you put something. When you set something down, imagine in your mind's eye that it explodes. Now don't actually blow anything up, people, okay? I know I'm on live television and I'm not, but just, just your imagination, it's gotta be something wild like yeah. that. You could do, you could make it come to life or do, use your imagination in a different way. I like to just imagine there's a little firecracker attached to it and explodes and it takes part of the table with it. It just takes me a second to visualize that, but what happens in your brain is your brain goes into kind of a survival instinct mode and it pays attention to that information. You can go away for weeks. Really? Uh, you know, I've, I've gone away for three weeks on a vacation before and, and the minute I think of my Keys, that explosion pops into my mind and I remember exactly that where I put it. Great tip. But then yeah. you got to remember that you well, but, to make it And explode. that's where the attentiveness comes from. Do it, do it do every it, day yeah, for practice, a week and you'll practice. get into a habit and then you'll have a trained memory like but me. Dave, you'll come back you, and you'll surprise me. But Dave, how do you fix this? You know, not blanking out during stressful situations like taking a test or during yeah. an interview. Live TV. Yes. <laughs> stress. Yeah. stress really interfe interferes with memory. We're going to do a stress thing yes. pretty soon. Okay. But it, it interferes with memory in a chemical basis. So you have to deal with the stress directly. Uh, I have a couple of techniques in my program. Program. Essentially, uh, the, the simple answer is you change the way you breathe and you change the, the direction you look in. It sounds really simple, but actually breathing deeper for just a, like three breaths through your stomach really deep and looking up for a few seconds changes your state and it helps get you in touch with more of your visual memory. Think of last time somebody asked you for directions. You, what do you do? You go, uh, let's see, it's down the street to the right. Your natural method is to look up, but when you get stressed, you look down, it actually disconnects you from your memory. We want to put you to the test before yeah. The show, I had a brand new deck of like cards. Just before the show, just like before five like, minutes. Not even. Yeah. I was barely, I barely made it <laughs> uh, to start at, at nine o'clock. Uh, so I opened this deck, I yep. gave it to you, and then you memorized every card. Now, the yes. funny thing Don't was. Don't shuffle it now. I won't, I promise. <laughs> As you see there, I'm, yep. I'm shuffling it in front of Dave. I actually dropped a couple, but I picked them back up. Yeah. 
but I, I actually forgot there one. There was one that was underneath the chair, and it drove me nuts because I had 51 cards in my head, and I, I had 52 slots for the cards. So, so you actually slot this in your head, all 52 yeah, of them. Yeah, it's kind of like mental file folders when you when you know Amazing. the system. You're gonna, now, mind you, this is a deck of cards, but we've done this with, with kids uh, in elementary school with times tables or okay. with university students and, and formulas. But this is a demonstration for TV. So. Okay, so let's start off. Can I start off the top? Yeah, yeah sure, we'll sure. Go uh, easy. Let's okay. see. The, the first one should be the... Uh, uh, just to get warmed up, the eight of diamonds, then the two of uh, no wait wait the the nine of clubs, then the two of diamonds, then the the five of diamonds, the uh, yeah where was it the, the two of diamonds then oh no no it was. Uh, the, should be the king of yes, diamonds. Yes, then that's the, unbelievable. I was going to yeah, say, you sorry, skipped I, one, I, I, but you I missed got, one. Yeah, yeah, the king them. of diamonds, and then, then the five of diamonds, then the, I was a little eager here, then the king of clubs, yeah. the uh, two of spades. Uh, can I go to the bottom the, of the deck? Yeah, well, actually, you can say any number between 1 and 52, and I'll tell you what card is attached to that number. Okay, so I've well, lost oh, well, the easy way to do is split, cut the deck anywhere, okay. and I'll tell, you, tell me the card, and I'll tell you the card after it. That'll be a good, easy way to five do it. Five of clubs. Okay, so five of clubs. This is crazy. I know. I'm just, like, fascinated watching your face, Dave, and seeing that, like, the process happen. The next one should be... Um, if I got it right, it should be the uh, queen of spades, right? Wow. Wow. There you go. Well done. <laughs> so with the same way I did that, you can, you know, organize, you know, names and faces. You can organize you, your studies. Uh, and obviously, obviously the reason why I started a, a school club is because I want to I wanna work myself out of a job. I want every student <laughs> in Canada to start up a memory club. It takes, it takes t uh, two minutes online. It doesn't cost you anything. The, the book is 10 bucks if you want to have some materials, so it's very affordable. Uh, and uh, there's a whole club kit, and it's only $50 for, for clubs. So where do we go for info? Uh, MemoryTournament.ca. MemoryTournament.ca. Dave yeah. Farrow, thank you so much.